I'm uh, Dr. Christopher Schalk. I'm an assistant professor of forest wildlife management here in the Arthur Temple College of Forestry and Agriculture at Stephen F. Austin State University. So all snakes are predators, so they all consume other animals as their source of food. But in terms of their role within their ecosystem, they play a pretty important role in that they um, often consume other animals that are unwanted or around houses and things like that. Um, so a lot of rodents or pest species they consume. So functionally, they, they play a very important role um, here in, our, in East Texas. Um, so, I mean, if it's in your house um, and you're not sure what it is, you know, call someone that can handle it, so animal control. Um, if it's outside, you know, chances are you're, I would just leave it alone and just let it kind of, uh, you know, go on its, on its merry way. Don't, don't harass it or bother it because that's where, you know, if you, in, if you harass it or bother it, your probability of getting bit increases. And if you don't know what it is, it could be potentially be venomous, so um, there could be some problems there. But if it's a cons persistent problem in around your house, you know, call um, animal co control to help relocate it to somewhere else if it's, if it's really bothering. So we actually have a couple common ones here. So probably the some of the more common ones we'll see here in East Texas are, are rat snakes. So they tend to be large, um, and they can pretty be pretty variable in their color patterns, um, with you know gray patterning with some black spots um, and kind of a white underbelly. Um, you'll see them in on the ground or in arboreal hab uh, habitats as well. Um, some other common ones are, are coach whips that are uh, they tend to be more brown in color um, and very fast moving. Um, and then we have some, a couple other ones here. We'll start with this one. So this is, so this is a racer. So Colubra constrictor. So the, another kind of common name is the uh, buttermilk racer. So um, here in East Texas, these guys are actually pretty variable in their color patterns. So this one's a buttermilk racer because it has kind of the dark um, uh, back, but also you'll see these small white fleckings on their body as well. And then um, they're non-venomous, and then they'll tend to have kind of a whitish underbelly as well. Yeah. So these guys are non-venomous, and they're actually active foragers. So they'll spend a lot of time kind of moving across the landscape trying to find prey. Um, this guy's a probably a sub-adult. Um, they'll get a little bit bigger. But they're actually pretty variable, so they can be all black um, with a whiter underbelly. There's other ones that are almost like blue-green um, in color. Um, there's some that are, are um, uh, red as well. So another one that's another non-venomous species that it's common depending where uh, you know where you're at is this is a rough green snake. So you typically find these guys um, in more arboreal habitats. So they'll be climbing you know between branches on trees or shrubs, and you'll see you know their their kind of body shape reflects that. So they're they're really thin. Um, in terms of their body, they have this long, kind of thin tail that helps them grab onto to branches as they, they move uh, between uh, these arboreal microhabitats. Um, so these guys eat a lot of insects, so they're primarily insectivorous. Um, so they're eating a lot of the kind of the pests that, you know, we normally would want around uh, our houses. And this guy's a lot more docile compared to the racer, you know, not really as bitey. Um, pretty friendly demeanor is, you know this is the time of year where snakes are starting to become more active it's just the weather's right that you know it's starting to warm up a little it's not too hot yet 
So you're going to see a lot of increased snake activity, um, you know, as they're moving across the landscape looking for food. You know, if you don't bother them, they won't bother you is kind of the, the uh, advice I would give. So if you see them on the roads, you know, just avoid them and, and don't bother them. They're actually doing a lot of good in these ecos in our East Texas ecosystems. Around here in East Texas, some of the more common ones are copperheads. So you'll tend to find those in, in more terrestrial habitats. Um, they have a pretty distinctive kind of dorsal uh, pattern um, that alternates uh, the kind of this black outline. Um, another common one is, is cotton mouths or water moccasins. So they'll tend to be more aquatic in nature. They tend to have a darker uh, back as compared to copperheads. Um, you know, and then some of the other common ones are, are coral snakes. So they'll have a distinct pattern where, you know, the, the kind of the phrase is, if red touches yellow, you're a dead fellow. And if red touches black, you're okay, Jack, is basically uh, for milk snakes that look pretty similar. They're mimic. Um, and then you'll see things like timber rattlesnakes in, in certain areas. Um, they're pretty distinctive. They tend to be larger bodied with a kind of distinctive um, black and brown back patterning. Um, the, the thing is, is not to confuse, so certain snakes like to mimic venomous snakes, right, to try and avoid getting eaten. So things like water snakes um, will kind of flatten out their head and try and make it triangle shaped. That's not really a good indicator of whether or not a species is venomous or not. Um, if they're a pit viper, for example, like a cottonmouth or a copperhead or, or a rattlesnake, They'll tend to have kind of cat-like eye slits, so vertical eye slits, um, whereas water snakes would not. They'll have kind of rounded pupils. Coral snakes, for example, you know, they'll have those rounded pupils as well, but they have a very distinctive pattern, so it's pretty hard to mistake a, a snake for, you know, for anything other than a coral snake. Um, so again, if you do encounter a venomous snake, just leave it alone. Um, don't bother. That's where you know, you increase your likelihood of getting bit if you start to handle it and mess mess around with the snake. So my best advice is leave it alone. And if it really is becoming a nuisance, have a trained professional come in and help you remove it.